and Winship, I, I'm not going to talk about PSN. I'm going to talk about um, the experience of the Department for Education um, as they embarked upon and are currently partway through uh, the transition to a cloud-based procurement model for IT services. Uh, I do not represent the Department for Education. I actually work for EduServe. We're a supplier to the department. We're a supplier of public and private cloud uh, IT hosting services to the UK government sector and the charities sector. Um, we have a very long relationship with the Department for Education going back 16 years. Uh, I've been involved with them two years uh, in, in this current engagement, so I've seen how their thinking has evolved as they've gone through this procurement exercise. Uh, and I'd like to give a perspective, uh, but it's my perspective, on that process uh, and perhaps what's happened along the way. So before the department um, started on this journey, they had, as a lot of UK government departments do, very uh, significant relationships with large IT systems integration organizations, and one in particular, a, a very large um, global player, uh, long-term contract involvement across many aspects of the IT functions within the department, uh, a long-term relationship going back more than five years. Uh, they also had a number of application-specific, um, what I would call stacks, that's to say combinations of application development, support, maintenance, and hosting, all associated with the delivery of functionality. So, for example, at the Department of Education, the performance table system, um, which, which presents the UK-based data on um, educational performance of pupils and students. So the landscape prior to the major uh, re-procurement exercise, which, which really happened in about March of this year, I say, dominated by a single supplier, uh, a global partner, with some very uh, application-specific towers. Now, they had a very specific opportunity at the Department for Education. Um, I say opportunity, they probably had an ooh crikey moment as well. All their contracts, or a very large majority of their contracts, were due to expire in, the, in roughly the same time frame, in quarter one this year. This gave them potentially a problem with renegotiating a wide range of very complex um, contracts, but also an opportunity to adapt a new way of procuring. Um, so I should say the contracts that they're talking about were not only the ones that they'd kind of centrally negotiated as part of the department, but it also acquired as part of the government's arm's length body um, reduction agenda. So the merging of previously separate bodies into the Department for Education, which happened last year, 2012 for the most part. And through that process, the department also acquired a wide range of different contracts and different suppliers for those services a large part of which were all due for renegotiation or for re-tender re uh, in the early part of this year. So to their credit, they uh, adopted a, a, a holistic approach to the re-procurement of these systems, and they actually went with um, a service tower model. Now, I know other speakers today have spoken about the, uh, the various service towers. The, the lady from Detica this morning was presenting a different approach to service towers. The department's perspective on this was to have their SIAM layer, their service integration and management provider across the top of what are pretty much functional application-based service towers in the middle. They also regarded their, if you like, hosting requirement or infrastructure as a service as a slab at the bottom underpinning all of those application-specific towers. Uh, the color coding indicates when these things were due for re-procurement. So, Anything in light blue uh, has been procured this year, and the majority of them have been procured off of the cloud store, so using the G Cloud-based procurement model. Uh, anything in green uh, is, was regarded as, as an in-house service to be retained in-house, uh, and the amber, amber ones were to be procured at a later date. So a holistic service tower-based approach to procuring these services with a SIAM layer at the top and at the kind of cloud or infrastructure hosting layer at the bottom. We were obviously involved in the procurement of or, or, or supplying, potentially supplying the infrastructure as a service component. The department's requirements for both public facing um, cloud capacity, so relatively low secure security hosting, IL0, business, I, business impact level zero, business impact level two hosting, but also for secure on and off domain 
hosting, so business impact level three hosting requirements as well. So quite a rich requirement for hosting, uh, given the nature of the wide ranging, wide ranging nature of their application towers. So what did they find as a result of, of, of undertaking this, this procurement exercise? Um, I think they would agree that, that one of the, the best things they did was, was to effectively go out first for the SIAM element. So the service integration and management component was the first thing to be procured. They went to the G Cloud for that, uh, ran a, a, a search requirement effectively using the Cloud Store. I think it was um, G Cloud version 2 at the time. It's now on version 4, as, as the speaker mentioned earlier. Um, they identified and selected an organization to help them augment their own capability. So the DFE's approach here was to effectively retain the SIAM function in-house, but work very closely with an organization that could provide supplementary resources, people, to undertake specific tasks to help them with that SIAM setup. Um, and they used this SIAM effectively to set the standards and to run, if you like, the procurement of all the other elements as well. So we're using expert help and advice and assistance to help them through this very difficult uh, landscape and to help with the procurement exercise. They also um, allowed time for um, the procurement exercises to run in parallel, in conjunction with the existing contracts that they were running. Because clearly there's an exercise involved in re-procurement, which is about discovery. What do you have, what services do you have, what assets need to transfer and so on. That takes time and involves the participation of the existing vendors. Um, and there's also an exercise to take on board the uh, commercial and procurement skills to run an exercise of this type. So starting early, planning early uh, is a key activity, I think we'll all agree. I think they were, um, they'd be, they would say that they, they were surprised by the effect of potentially the new commercial models on their commercial planning. So the fact that uh, under the cloud-based procurement model, effectively, certainly things like infrastructure as a service and hosting are built on a consumption basis. You pay for what you use. That changes the whole nature of the commercial um, provisioning model, both uh, in terms of managing the capacity from the vendor's point of view and ensuring sufficient capacity is available at the right time, but specifically from the customer's point of view, the paying for those services. So previously, under, under a, a old-style contractual models, it's possible to predict what your spend is going to be in year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, whatever, and to put in place sufficient purchase order cover to, to, to manage those things. In a variable world, it, it doesn't necessarily work like that. So each month, in theory, the uh, bill could vary depending on the amount of consumption that's been made and the types of products that have been purchased or consumed. So actually changing the commissioning model uh, is something that, that has to be thought through very carefully, um, making sure you've got the right systems and people in place to uh, enable the payment for those services, which are, as I say, are going to vary month by month, um, is, I think, a, an, an element that was kind of a surprise when it came down to it, even though logically it follows from the consumption-based approach. I was asked to, to think a little bit about how the cloud and this flexible procurement model could help the digital by default agenda in government. Um, I think it follows, in this approach, products, systems, technologies are easier to procure, that they take less time. So there is a marketplace on the G Cloud for services, for software uh, and systems and capacity. It's, it's easier and quicker to procure it, so it's easier to try stuff. Digital by default and the, and the kind of agile approach to, to systems evolution um, is all about getting stuff out there early, getting feedback, changing it, iterating it, carrying it forward. Um, this kind of commercial and consumption-based model can facilitate that by making it easier and quicker to try things out, to procure capacity, to, to stand systems up, stand them down, more quickly uh, and also to scale them more quickly so if you have a hit on your hands and you have a system that really takes off the public like it citizens like it the profession likes it and they embrace it 
then you need to be able to scale it very quickly. And again, this, this cloud-based, both cloud-based technology model, but also the G-cloud-based and capacity-based procurement model make it easier to scale these things very quickly. So encouraging the digital by default agenda. Um, commenting on the kind of learnings from the experience that the department have undertaken, they would, I think, agree that the actual comparison of cloud store-based products is, um, is not necessarily as easy as, as, it might, as you might think. Um, you start by going to the cloud store and effectively typing in a search. Now, that search function itself has some, some quirks, certainly back at uh, G Cloud version 2. It was fairly, um, fairly quirky. I think it's a lot better now with the, as it's evolved. It's been iterated and on, onto version 4. So um, actually typing or constructing your search criteria is, uh, is, is a bit of an iterative process. Uh, and then, of course, you get different vendors offering what look like the same product but in different terms, ex explaining it in different ways, pricing it in different ways. So, so it's important to effectively run a, a comparison exercise, and that's what the department did. They shortlisted suitable vendors based on a search, and then they actually requested or generated clarification questions for those vendors um, in order to get a common base of understanding so they could compare apples with apples in a hosting context. So that exercise takes time, but is worth doing in terms of building a valid picture from a competitive point of view of the cloud landscape. Certainly the department were procuring multiple towers at the same time, owing to the, uh, the, the contractual framework they were working in. Appointing the SIAM first is, is key to that. So getting your service integration and management vendor in place to help you with subsequent procurements and to encourage the adoption of standards uh, and standard ways of working across all of those towers really makes that job a whole lot easier. Liaison between the towers is always going to be important. So in a world where you have different vendors providing different application functionality, different um, functionality to the business, um, but all interdependence upon, for example, the same infrastructure or the same network or the same service infrastructure, then it's obviously important that all parties communicate effectively. Um, so uh, establishing and running and maintaining regular cross-supplier technical fora groups is uh, another learning, really. Encouraging suppliers talking with each other discussing via the SIAM, so using the SIAM to facilitate those discussions uh, is another key thing, I think, that helps with the, both the setup and the operation of this service tower uh, environment. That's all I really wanted to say. Um, I'll be delighted to join the panel if there are any Q&A to, to follow. David, thank you.